Ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to be discussing some very interesting updates to not just the Zen 5 core counts but also Intel's roadmaps as well. It seems that both companies are making some significant changes across the board, not just the CPUs but also other products. In this video though, I want to discuss the CPU side of things mostly because honestly, some very interesting uh, developments have happened in the past 24 or so hours. In fact, I wasn't even intending to actually release this video, I was working on editing the podcast that I conducted yesterday with Matt Hargett. We talk about a lot of stuff. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X, game development, lots of cool stuff. Uh, it's kind of lengthy, so I'm probably going to have to kind of cut and adjust it a little bit to maybe put it across a couple of different episodes because honestly it's like three hours long which i think is not really digestible by most people but um anyway let's get into the video itself so let's start with zen 5 shall we seems like a good idea jim over at adore tv has leaked a couple of very interesting elements concerning zen 5 um so basically zen 5 and zen 5 c dense has actually been uh, given core counts the long story short here is that the desktop version of Zen 5 is going to be 8 cores per CCX. For server though, for Zen 5C, it becomes 16 cores per CCX. There are some also differences in, let's say, the manufacturing process as well. With the desktop variant using TSMC's 4NM process, and 3NM is going to be reserved purely for server. So what does this mean? Well, the, in bottom line land, Ryzen is going to retain 16 cores, 32 threads for its highest end SKUs. Now I've actually leaked this a couple of times myself most recently. And the server dense numbers though for Bergamo, again Zen 5C, that is going to be 192 cores. Now I can confirm this information is almost certainly accurate. Again, I've mentioned eight cores per CCX a couple of times in desktop. And last year, I'd even said that 16 cores was the number I'd been hearing for Zen 5 CCXs, along with 8, funnily enough. Basically, I think my sources, or at least one of them, had gotten the Zen 5C core counts confused with the irregular, quote-unquote, Zen 5 variants for desktop, for example. However, more recently, a source has actually asked me to not state publicly the 192 cores uh, for Zen 5C. Now, I want to be clear. Uh, I want to be clear. Sorry, I'm not stealing Jim's funder. He leaked this publicly first, but to my knowledge, he is correct here. I'm also very uncertain about the chiplet L3 info. Um, I've stated previously that it could be on Vcash, and Jim himself actually mentions about this. Honestly, I don't really know what's going on. In a more recent video, I said that I was growing uncertain about all of this. It's possible it was never planned or simply had been adjusted within AMD itself. I'll include an example slide from an older video here, and I've also put out a couple of other slides as well, somewhere or another, but you get the idea. Again, one of the other reasons I'd heard that 16 cores um, with 8 cores per CCX was remaining um, the, the case for Zen 5 is things like Infinity Fabric and scaling and so on. Basically, it just wasn't needed as well for Zen 5. AMD just doesn't feel like they need to increase the Ryzen core counts at this point. Eventually, I'm sure they will, like with Zen 6 or 7 or whatever, who the hell knows, and that's not a leak, I'm just giving an example. I'm sure core counts will eventually go up, but currently anyway, I don't think they need to do so. Now, what I will also add is that I think a number of changes have occurred internally with AMD's plans, not just for Zen 5. I mean, I've mentioned a couple of times already in videos that uh, we've seen the refresh of N31 canned. I'm almost, I'm almost positive, excuse me, that that has occurred. It was planned at one point and they've canned it. And I think that th this, th this mindset has actually shifted across different divisions. I think Zen 5, for example, timelines internally have changed. This is according to multiple sources. A couple of projects have possibly been canned. A source has even told me that Strix Point, which was initially launching, I think it was in CS 2024, has actually been pushed back for later in 2024. I'm not certain the exact date of that, but again, it's going to be very interesting if that's the case, because it seems basically AMD are doing a lot of like internal 
um, I, I guess you could say internal kind of uh, audits and making some decisions. And this actually brings me to Intel and we'll start things out with Arrow Lake. Now, Benchlife is actually confirming we're going to see Arrow Lake stay with an 8 slash 16 core configuration. That's Lion and Skymont respectively. So obviously the performance cores are the 18 and energy efficient cores are the 16. I believe that this is actually correct. In fact, I've put out an Arrow Lake leak where I did mention 8 slash 16. But I think from what I understand with the internal roadmaps, the dates are not quite lining up. Bionic Squash actually on Twitter also seems to indicate this to my personal understanding. And of course, timelines can change because we're talking about products which are like a year plus away. But to my understanding, uh, we're looking at the second half of 2024 for Arrow Lake, possibly even a little later. But Meteor Lake will launch earlier that year. Now, before that, though, um, enthusiasts actually get another processor for desktop I'm talking about here. So, you know, ignore other products like, for example, servers and uh, laptops, that type of stuff. We're talking purely about the um, server, uh, sorry, for the desktop market. And so Raptor Lake is actually going to be receiving a refresh. So before you start wringing your hands with glee, because I know you're super excited about this one, um, it's basically the same thing again, albeit with higher clock frequencies. I don't think, for example, you get additional cash. I don't think there's any major architectural changes. However, some some core counts will possibly raise, not on the highest end, but for example, low to mid range could potentially get some additional e cores. Um, from what I'm told, though, this is going to launch Q3 this year, so that's 2023. It will, however, retain the same socket and compatibilities you've got now. So let's say you've got an LGA 1700 motherboard. Well, by golly gosh, you're good to go. But Meteor Lake has also seen some interesting shenanigans. So Benchlife are also reporting that some interesting shenanigans are up with Meteor Lake, with 6 plus 16 cores basically cancelled. And it does seem to be a recent thing. So older roadmaps from Intel, um, so late last year, for example, they basically were not indicating this. So it does seem that Intel have made some significant changes internally over the past while. But from what a couple of sources have told me, Meteor Lake is basically going to be bringing up the low range. So it's going to be low to mid range offerings. It will be on a new socket, but Arrow Lake will be for, you know, the enthusiasts, quote unquote, because I know, like, I, I the reason I say it like that is because, like, you know, if you can't, just for example, you know, if you can't, if your budget doesn't stretch to like a, you know, a 7950 X3D or like a 13900 KS, and you can only pick up like a 13600 or, you know, you're still rocking like, I don't know, a couple of older generation processor, just for example, like a 3950X from, from AMD, it doesn't mean you're still not an enthusiast, right? But you know what I mean, like a flagship kind of product. Um... So yeah, I, I think that Arrow Lake is basically going to be on the same socket. Obviously, that's already been leaked by Benchlife. I also think this socket could potentially f uh, support another future CPU generation, but I don't really have many details about that, so just take it with a grain of salt. What does all of this mean? Well, basically, Zen 5 as well as uh, Intel's products they're going to be very, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think that it's actually going to be kind of close between the two companies. Honestly, I think it's going to be a very interesting time to compare Zen 5 and the equivalent Intel products over the next while. I'm going to be very curious to see how um, the market basically adjusts itself because let's face it, guys, there have been some very interesting developments on the GPU side of things. I think we can all agree that we just at this point want to see the mid range products from AMD as well as NVIDIA for the graphics side of things. And it's going to be very interesting because I think, you know, late this year, very early next year, I'm sure we're going to start to see all of the the rumored stuff for the next generation of graphics products as well for, you know, GeForce has already been some bits and pieces that I've personally been fed. So it's going to be very interesting to see how PC hardware changes over time, especially since it seems at the moment anyway that the PlayStation 5 Pro and uh, so on seems to be dead. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, video as usual. If you did, you know what to do. It's YouTube land. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.